It's on the show with us this evening, Mr uh, Rick Mayall. Kev, hey! How are you, man? I'm very good, thank you very much for coming on the show tonight. Not at all, most of all, how are you people out there in Bolton? Are all your viewers out there, Kev? We're very good, and uh, everybody's loving the, loving the song. Really? Which, which is, of course, you know my Noble England? No, Noble England, that's well, the reason that we're here. Well, it's a very important event, this. This is more important than usual. Think, hey, why is the Wildcat Anarchy King, Rick, doing a football single? Well, I'll tell you why. It's very unusual. If you look at the Mayan people's pyramid, there's a Mayan people's pyramid, and the hieroglyphics say on the end, say on the side, that the end of the entire universe and the complete world apocalypse is going to happen on the 21st of December, 2012, at exactly 11.11 a.m. GMT. And this time and date is the absolute end of the Mayan people's five-and-a-half-century-old calendar, right? Right. So that means, I mean, proper grown-up intellectuals and uh, sort of architects and people and uh, all sorts of people who dig up, not architects, what do they call them, archaeologists, yeah. right? This is so important, I can barely scrabble the words together. They have found this old pyramid, and it's five-and-a-half centuries old, and the very end of that calendar says that at 11 minutes past 11 GMT, on the 21st of December 2012, all of time, and space are going to end. The universe is going to end. The world is going to end. Absolutely everything is going to end. That is why England absolutely have to win the World Cup this year. <laughs> last chance. Yeah, this is the last World Cup ever. So this is why, I mean, I, of course I'm a noble Englishman. I'm a proud patriot. And so are all good English men and women and children and grown-ups and pensioners. But this, for this time, we've really got to support our, our own team. England win the World Cup. I mean, presumably you're a, a, an English patriot, are you, Kev? Absolutely, 100%. Well, there you are. And uh, I've been playing the song. It's got good reactions around here in Bolton. People are uh, singing along when it's been played in the pubs and the clubs. Well, this is what I want. I, I want, hopefully, all England fans who can quote Shakespeare as the football is being played. I mean, OK, I wrote it with Shaky Bill. You know, because in 1415, the Battle of Agincourt, Kev, the Battle of Agincourt was won by Henry V. And that is when a few lonely Englishmen were massively outnumbered on a foreign soil by many different countries in the same army. I'm talking about 1415, the Battle of Agincourt. Oh. There was France, there was Holland, there was Italians, there were Spanish, there were Germans, all gathered together in one force against these few brave Englishmen. And they won, we won, the Battle of Agincourt in 1415, which is why Shaky Bill, right, William Shakespeare, that's, it. that's why he thought that was our England's greatest victory ever, because he was dead by the time the 1966 World <laughs> Cup came along. So he wrote this great speech, once more unto the pitch, dear friends, once more, to lift up these walls, to raise up these walls with our English cheer. Even I got the words wrong then. <laughs> but... That's why I thought it'd be fantastic if Shaky Bill and I rewrote the words slightly and released it so that England can win the World Cup this year. There you go. Well, let's hope that it uh, spurs the, the England team on. I mean, you well, I think I think also if you got a huge fan. I mean, are you are you going out to Africa or are you? Are you no, un un unfortunately not. I've got a show to do that night. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I want I would like to range around all the English pubs and clubs having a pint or two or nine and uh, just uh, encouraging all the fans well I mean you have got uh, the, the singles now out um, you can buy that online it's in the iTunes store that's uh, right you can get iTunes or 7 digital but the clever thing is if you download all five mixes it counts as five chart entries you see right. we've got to have Rick as number one it's just a shame we don't still have Top of the Pops I'd love to see you I perform know. on Top of the Pops Oh, golly. I mean, I know there are a lot of younger, groovy listeners listening to your program, Kev, but you and I can remember, can we not, Pan's People. Absolutely, and hot gossip. Oh, hot gossip. But there was a particular girl in Pan's People. She was the svelte, dark-haired one. And I can never remember her name, and I was always thought, if I ever saw her, I'd probably faint. You know, when you're a young man, <laughs> you do fall in love. Easily. I, rem I vaguely remember it. It's only ever happened once, uh, one other time to me, and that's when good old Ben Elton, my good old mate, he uh, he cast me as Robin Hood in uh, in the Black Adder special, yeah. um, which was uh, where I was Robin Hood, and Maid Marian. Can you believe this? Maid Marian was played by Kate Moss, wow. and she was the other girl. I've always had a bit of a bit of a bump in the. Uh, 
uh, in the chest about. And uh, I got to snog her in a scene, and I got nine separate takes. Because <laughs> I kept saying, oh, no, I haven't quite got the, the feel of the kiss quite right. I got nine snogs out of it. And, uh, the, and, and they really pay- made my life. And they paid you for that as well. Yeah, can you believe it? Uh, you see, you've got it. When I was at Manchester, I know Bolton's a bit of a rival to Manchester, but uh, that is where I met little Ben Elton. It was well worth all that work I did with him to finally get several snogs out of Kate Moss. I have to say, on the subject of the stuff that you, you did during the 80s and the 90s, the kind of the young ones and bottom and all that kind of thing... Surely you're you, not old enough to know that, Kev. Do you know, I grew up on the young... I grew up with the young ones and with the comic strip as well. Oh, yeah, well, there's um, a comic so strip movie coming up this summer. But sorry, go on, what were you saying? I have to say, you always looked like you, you make programmes that look like they were fun to make. Yes. Uh, and quite dangerous to make as well, I would think. Well, I'm afraid they were. They were They were just... Uh, well, I mean, I think... Oh, God, I, mean, I don't know if we want to get intellectual about it, but um, I think television was sort of more open in those days. Uh, these days, if you subject uh, an idea, there's an awful lot of people who get terribly worried about the sort of things you say. I think um, in the 80s and the 90s, People were much more, the, the, the vibe was much more anti-authoritarian. And, and nowadays, the authorities really tighten up. I did a couple of radio interviews um, over the last few days, and I got into trouble twice uh, on the radio for saying vulgar words. I didn't even know these words were vulgar, <laughs> you know, and I won't say them. Of course, I won't say them on your radio. Although, I, I could say, and you could bleep it. Yeah, absolutely. Go for it. Well, the word was bastard. I said bastard, and they freaked out completely. <laughs> So I said, no, I said, well, is it all right if I say pants? And they said, yes, Rick, you can say pants. And I said that as a sort of joke, but they took it quite seriously. They said, oh, yes, Rick, you can say pants. You have to wonder if the, the people that you've been talking to have never actually seen you in a, in a performance anywhere. No, I mean, they're just, I don't know if it's, if, if it's I mean, the, the 90s, me and Aid have uh, been working live as Bottom, and I had a fantastic tour as Alan Bastard, which I can say most delicately. Which I actually, I saw you as Alan Bastard in Stoke-on-Trent. Oh, well, there you are. And that was good fun. That was a couple of years ago. So mainly the work has been live. I think live shows, the audience have got so much surprise and action. I mean, a live show's always been, always had the edge on a, on a telly show slightly because you can adapt and change your words according to what the audience are. Okay. But, uh, but nowadays, the surprise that they see how wild you look on stage, um, it makes the live shows even better. Because telly is so restricted nowadays. Just with the election coming up, is there any chance of a reappearance of uh, Mr. Bastard? Well, I thought if there's an election coming up, people are so cross-eyedly angry and bored about the whole thing. Look, we have a magnificent, battered, bankrupt old country in England that we all love so much. And the time has surely come, rather than just piddling around with deciding who's going to win the election, what we need is a real leader and love for our country to be reflected in something. And that's why another reason why I think bringing out Noble England as a single is such a good idea. Henry V gave a great speech once more unto the pitch, dear friends. And I think that spirit, here's our real leader. It doesn't matter whether it's Conservative or Labour or Liberal Democrat or what. The real leader is the English football team and winning that because what I want to do is I want the more people that buy my single the better chance the team have of winning because I think the greater the support the greater the performance of the players so I want to be the one who brings the World Cup back for Her Majesty the Queen don't forget we play our first game against the United States of America and we play them on Her Majesty's official birthday which is the 12th of June and I want to bring that cup back after the whole of the World Cup and after we've won it and all the celebrations I want to bring it back to Buckingham Palace Gardens and I want to give it to the Queen in the gardens I think that if if England win the World Cup we should have a bit of a um, you know a bit of a petition to get you on that open top double decker bus with the England team that's where I'd like to be. And it's only your listeners, Kev, who can make that happen by buying the single. I mean, this isn't all that I want to be a big, famous, pan-global phenomenon. I already am a big, famous, <laughs> pan-global phenomenon. I just love my country, and I want my country to win the World Cup. Just once more, before the end of time and space, this is England's last chance. It's destiny. I think it is destiny. That she was she was one of the uh, Charlie's Angels, wasn't she? <laughs> Do you think I'm turning into an old perv? Turning into, as opposed to <laughs> being a being a young perv previously. Well, a sort of middle aged perv. <laughs> well, me and Adrian, we did write a very rude um, uh, show for the for, for the telly, but they thought it was too naughty. 
so there you go. <laughs> People are always saying, when's Bottom coming back? I mean, we can't go on telling the same jokes, can we? So we had Richie and Eddie in very different circumstances, and they didn't like that at all, I'm afraid. So it's not me and A, it's not wanting to work. It's the fact that uh, the telly people just think we're too naughty. On the subject of Aid, I mean, is there a chance that we're going to hear No England played on a medieval lute? Well, that's a good question. I'm just... I was very careful not to talk about the Bad Shepherds, which is AIDS band, and there's no way that I'm bringing out a pan-global, mega, universal hit in any way as a rival to the Bad Shepherds, who are jolly nice in their own special little way, just because they're all proper musos, and the fact that I rock with the baddest. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I don't bring out singles just as a rough friend. And I tell you, this is an important thing as well, Kev. I have always had a hit single once every decade. The 1980s with the great Cliff Richard. Yep. The 1990s with the great Bad News. And here we are in the noughties, the very last uh, year of the noughties. Here we are and uh, with Noble England. So I think it's, uh, it's Rick Mel's fans, it's time to go down to your downloading place and do a bit of downloading. Absolutely, and people can go on to uh, nobleengland.com and they can win a chance to have a meal with you on the game on there as well, on oh, the opening yeah. game. Yeah, they can certainly. I'm not going to make a vulgar joke about putting things in your mouth. <laughs> this is the thing to do. And let me just say, you can watch my video on YouTube and you can come on my Facebook. <laughs> So I just want to say, ladies and gentlemen, that Kev Gurney is the man. I'm not talking about Kevin Chervé. I'm talking about Kev Gurney from Bolton FM. Because Bolton FM is the place to listen to Noble England. Because Bolton FM is the place for guys and chicks who are total.